Hey folks and welcome back to the channel for some more Project Zomboid content. Now with so many new players filtering into the game thanks to the recent Steam Summer Sale, today I wanted to talk about some of the do's and don'ts of multiplayer in Project Zomboid, some of the pitfalls that new players tend to fall into, and how they can be avoided for the betterment of the server that you'll be playing on. If you find the video useful or entertaining, as always, please do consider dropping it a like to support the channel, and if you want to see more Project Zomboid stuff, you can subscribe as well for more videos just like this one. So this is a topic I've wanted to talk about for a little while now, and whilst Project Zomboid is a fantastic game, one of its main points for improvement is the longevity and lifetime of online servers. Now with that in mind, however, there's some things that every player can keep in mind before jumping into online play that can improve the quality of life for not just themselves, but all people involved, both server owners and players that populate the server. First and foremost, let's talk carpentry and metalworking. Now, for both of these skills, disassembly of objects can grant you XP gains, and in single player, this would be a totally reliable way of gaining XP without any consequence. But when it comes to multiplayer, there are certain items that can drastically affect a server's lifetime. Now let's say for example that you decide to strip a house down and start dismantling for experience gains. Anything that you dismantle that spawns loot will be gone forever. This is why sometimes you'll log into public multiplayer servers and find houses littered with scrap metal but no loot containers, it looks like the place has been emptied. It's extremely damaging to the lifetime of a server, so try to keep this to a minimum wherever possible and focus on items that aren't functional for mechanics. For example, we could dismantle a bunch of low wooden fences around the gardens of housing. It's not stopping any zombies, but it'll give you XP. Beds also make for a good choice, as they are more often than not, not used in multiplayer for sleeping. Now of course that depends on the server settings, but it's definitely more preferable to dismantling loot containers. And better yet, you can avoid dismantling objects entirely and still gain carpentry XP by sawing logs and putting up planks as barricades. You can graduate to crafting different items as soon as your level increases one or two times. The same thing goes for metalworking here, try to dismantle items that are pure purely used for furnishing rather than having an actual use. Sinks, bathtubs and toilets are all items that we don't really want to dismantle if we can help it as they hold water even after the water goes out, but small metal fences make the perfect target. Alright, so we've covered dismantling and experience gains, now let's take a look at loot spawns, how they work on multiplayer and what you need to know about doing your part in order to keep a server healthy in this regard. Now in single player, most players choose not to have loot spawns available simply because you're the only one on the map, and in multiplayer it's the opposite. Loot is usually set to respawn after a certain period of time, that much most people already know, right? Well, what you might not know about most multiplayer servers is that they tend to put a cap in place for items per container. On our server, for example, containers will not spawn more items if there are already around 5 items or more in that container, and this is used to keep loot from simply piling up to the point where cabinets are full and you hit something and you have everything you need to survive. With this in mind, it has become a relatively common occurrence to see players doing what's coined as loot cycling. This involves removing items from containers to cause them to spawn fresh loot on the next spawn cycle. You'll find servers will tend to have different rules towards loot cycling wherever you go, but there's one essential part of this process that I'd advise everyone to do. Essentially, if you're going to cycle loot spawns, make sure to take the items you're removing from the container, drop them into a nearby garbage can or dumpster, and then hit the delete button at the top of the inventory panel. Try not to just leave them on the floor. Items will start to build up if you leave them on the floor, and this not only sets a bad example for other players and ruins their immersion a little bit, it causes the server to expend resources rendering those items into the world. If you clean up after yourself, and server performance will be much better for all players as a result. Next up, we're talking about vehicles. Every player in Project Zomboid eventually wants to try and acquire a vehicle, and depending on server settings and or mods, this could be incredibly easy or a real challenge to get one up and running. So when it comes to vehicles, it's important to remember that there's no respawns for these. Once they are spawned into the world, that's it, no more appear. So with that in mind, my two simple tips are don't hoard vehicles and don't scrap vehicles any more than you need to. Hoarding vehicles is sort of self-explanatory. If you're going to build a fleet of vehicles for all 
manner of things, these are vehicles that are going to be taken away from new players to the server, making their experience mu that much harder and increasing the likelihood that they'll just go somewhere else. Likewise, if you're looking to repair a vehicle, try not to take parts from vehicles that are likely to be driven. Where you can, focus on taking parts from spawns like mechanics workshops, especially when it comes to wheels as they're pretty common spawns in those locations, or if you do need to take some vehicle parts, try to do it from vehicles that are already missing some key components or are a little banged up. Also remember, you can repair vehicle parts with the right mechanics and metalworking skills paired with some metal supplies, so you might not need to go hunting for parts at all. Once we're on the topic of vehicles and scrapping for parts, there's a couple of mods that can be used if you're a server host looking to cut down on this problem. The DIY engine parts and DIY vehicle parts mod allow you to craft all of the parts you'll need to fix up most of your apocalyptic workhorses, providing that you've read a magazine for the right knowledge and have the right metalworking and mechanics skills. It's a good solution to a problem I've seen a lot of on our own server. Now leading on from vehicles quite nicely, we've got sound and audio cues. Now this is one that works both ways and it's very easy to completely disregard this in multiplayer. Any sound you generate will draw zombies, right? That much we know. Well, when engaging with other players in multiplayer, that's something that we need to consider. On a PvP server, this can make for a fantastic weapon against other players, especially vehicles. But in a PvE server, we have to be mindful when passing other players' bases with vehicles, driving to their location, firing gunshots nearby, that sort of thing. Sometimes making noises is simply necessary, but where possible, try to think about the other players that you're going to be affecting when making that noise and what kind of situation you could be putting that player in if you know there's one close to you. So for the last part of this video I just wanted to touch on safe houses and which locations to choose in multiplayer servers. Again this is different for every server which is why I bring this one up really. Some servers, mine included, will ask you not to claim locations as safe houses that represent a large loot location in Project Zomboid and a great example of this would be the Louisville Police Department and Detention Centre or any of the big shopping malls. The logic here is that claiming a location of that magnitude significantly limits the looting capabilities of other players. And that said, not all servers worry about this and accept any safe house location. When you're joining a server for the first time, it's worth asking in the server chat or on that server's discord to see what their rules are on this front. This will mean you're not having to go through the hassle of moving your base later on after you've done a bunch of work securing supplies and building up fortifications. All right, so that just about covers us for the do's and don'ts of multiplayer in Project Zomboid. But as with any game, servers have different rules depending on where you go. So if you've made it this far into the video, maybe drop a comment about your best tips related to multiplayer that you'd give to other survivors when joining a server for the first time. I think it's really important we get a good standard for new players joining the game right now. So I'm eager to hear your thoughts and what advice you would give to them. Once again, a very special thank you to all of my patrons for supporting the channel and taking part in the shenanigans on our Patreon server, which is currently in a 10 years later themed wipe cycle. Link in the description if you want to come and join them. Thanks folks, and I'll see you all in the next one.